How are you? We hope you had a good day. And um, while we are in the month of July, and I trust you have enjoyed the first six months of the year, we've had to grapple with the pandemic and so on. But we thank God for having sustained us. Well, we are now in the hurricane season. And we are surely asking God to protect us. In the meanwhile, and you recall we did do a session about disaster preparedness. And therefore, you want to be conscious of the realities of this season. Even although we ask God to protect us, we want to do the best we can to prepare to be prepared as well. Well, again, with me this evening in this program, I have Reverend Kelman. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening to you, viewers. Very pleasant afternoon. Yes. All right. And this evening, we want to address a topic. Of course, we know that it is a vast topic, so we can't even address it in two sessions. But we would try to look at the whole idea of sexuality and uh, sexual behavior, sexual norms, what is sexual purity and so on, how possible it is, things to that effect. And uh, we do hope that it's beneficial to you. Well, this is the Church of Nazarene Baptist District Family Forum. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this occasion that we can join with our listeners and viewers on CBC 8 and to propagate your word, even as we focus on enriching family life in Barbados. We do understand that the family is the core of the society, and we are quite aware and cognizant that if we can enrich our families, we will enrich our nation and our people. Help us today as we focus on this area, critical area of sexuality, that you will guide us, even as those who listen and we who speak may be beneficial. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your guidance. This is my prayer for Christ's sake. Amen. So viewers, we'll be back with you in a moment. The Church of the Nazarene Family Forum, shaping our society for the future by enhancing our homes and securing our destiny. Come join us every Sunday at 5 p.m. on CBC TV 8 as we turn the spotlight on an aspect of family life of critical importance to us. Tune in and be blessed. All right, we are back with you. Color frame. Um, maybe your husband, your um, wife, girlfriend, boyfriend. We want to invite the teenagers as well to listen to us. Um, we just surely want to share some critical information. Reverend Kelman, as I said, we are focusing on sexuality, sexual behavior. Of course, sexuality is quite a wide topic. Mm -hmm. And when we think of sexuality, we think of femininity, masculinity. Orientation, sexual orientation. Sexual orientation. Yeah, people with gender roles. Gender roles. You know, um, mm -hmm. people the, the, the traditional, non traditional roles as right, well. Right, right. Uh, because we, we know that we live in a very uh, age where there's so much fluidity yes. in almost everything. And so mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, a very, it's a very important topic. One that we as a church sometimes <coughs> um, we tend to, to run from. Yes. Uh, or we throw a blanket over it. Right. Know, but and, it's critical. And pretend it is not an issue. Yes. Uh, but there are many, many, many concerns, many, many challenges mm -hmm. um, in terms of of the issue of sexuality. And let me also say the Reverend Fry that you know I was I was viewing our our, our international churches program, uh, a journey of grace, and um, and I think though that is a very apt and, and fitting you know uh, topic mm -hmm. for this time because the church needs to be in a position to exercise great grace. Yes, you know, um, in many of these. Um, situations. Mm -hmm. Very true. Mm -hmm. And therefore, as we, as we zero in on sexual behavior, sexual norms, um, 
sexual purity possibilities. Mm -hmm. um, the, 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 the function of the family is critical. Yes. Whether a family is dysfunctional or functional. Mm -hmm. And uh, I suppose in this, this, as we said, this fluid age, sometimes definitions yeah. are vary because um, people are seeing it through their eyes. Yeah. And roles change too. And roles change. And roles change because, yes. because uh, <coughs> don't, don't forget that a lot of the, um, the roles that we assign to, to men and women mm -hmm. um, change over time, you know. Yes. I mean, many years ago, you would, you know, a man would say, well, I'm the, I'm the chief bread earner or mm -hmm. winner mm -hmm. in my family, you know, right. the one that brings the bacon. Right. Uh, but we now know that um, our, our, our female counterparts um, are, are doing a phenomenal job mm -hmm. in many cases yes. of, of bringing the money to, into the mm -hmm. home. In some cases, they're, what they have contributed to the family is more than the man. More, more than the man. Yeah. I, mean, mm -hmm. I mean, years ago, any, any construct of, a, uh, of a, you know, a house father or, mm -hmm. or, or mm -hmm. a male still at home and takes care of the children, mm -hmm. you know, will be seen as being... Very strange. Yes, yeah, strange. But it happens. Yeah. And, it happens. And, 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 oh, Lord, this is the basic yes, it happens. You know, but now we have fathers who will give their jobs mm -hmm. because um, the wife's or the mother's income mm -hmm. is, is far in excess of, of theirs, mm -hmm. and uh, therefore, you know, um, you know, for the better of the family, they figure, the yeah, because 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 very normally, yes. of, course, of course, we know that that still creates a, a conflict in some mm -hmm. relationships because mm -hmm. uh, you know gender roles are are, are are hard to to change, but yes. they're changing because of yes. the of the social dynamics, right? And that that are, are, are the, that are at work, yes, yes, right. So we we do agree that sexuality is a white topic, yes. but um, and essentially. Our perspective of sexuality impacts our values, mm -hmm. um, our behavior, mm -hmm. because our values, mm -hmm. um, our behavior springs from our values right. and our beliefs right. system and so on. And that's right. going to impact how we, for example, mm -hmm. how we treat our body. Mm -hmm. If we see our body as a temple or if we see ourselves mm -hmm. as being special, mm -hmm. then we would not necessarily be um, loose with how we treat our bodies and so on. And also it depends on what is our, our source, our source material mm -hmm. um, for our lives. I mean, we as believers, um, the Word of God is our absolute standard. Mm -hmm. And uh, and we do, not, we do not make an issue with that at all. Mm -hmm. uh, but the other persons who, who look to uh, the sociology, the psychology, mm -hmm. um, the culture, mm -hmm. you know, as they're, as they that is average to their lives, yes, you yes, know, yes. and therefore their response is going to be a lot, a lot mm -hmm. different to what right. we as Christians, you Same. know, are promoting. And of course, I mean, I would probably need to, to acknowledge that, you know, the, the, the absolute uh, word or the word as, as our absolute, you know, authority, uh, in many cases, some individuals do not necessarily agree to that. Mm -hmm. And therefore, there's a kind of a, a relativism yes. um, that has stepped in. Yes. And, uh, and so everything's on a scale, you know, mm -hmm. everything is on a continuum. Right. And, and even though psychologically, you know, um, maybe I understand that in terms of sexuality, you know, they talk about there's no, there's no pure heterosexual or homosexual, they're all a continuum from, from one end to the other end. Mm -hmm. And maybe that I, 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 I understand that in terms of psychology. And the reality of it is that scripture tells us that it's male mm -hmm. and female. But of course, that's in the very first book of the Bible, yes. chapter 2. Yes. And God created male and female. Yes. That may seem very insignificant, seems so simple. But what are the implications of that? God created male and female. And later on, he talks about the man leaving and cleaving to the wife. Mm -hmm. And they become one flesh. Mm -hmm. Put simple, but it's critical. Mm -hmm. It's one flesh. Reality mm -hmm. points back to sex. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, se sex and also it points back to the difference as well. Yes. You know, um, you know the idea of, of male and female mm -hmm. um, who are different. Different in gender. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, coming together to form mm -hmm. a union. Yes. Um, which, as scripture points out, is the most significant union mm -hmm. uh, for this reason. A man will leave his father mm -hmm. and mother mm -hmm. and cleave unto his wife. So, so the, the marital dyad even even trumps biology. 
That's correct. Right? Because, mm -hmm. because our mothers and fathers are maybe the closest persons to us biologically. Yes. Um, correct. And, and, and what is it? That initial bond that is there. Yes. So you're going to leave that. Yes. And uh, create a new. And you, but, you, but, you, but you think about it. It's beautiful. I mean, our, 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 our Powerful. parents. Our parents are the ones that raised us, you mm -hmm. know, we, we suckled at our, mm -hmm. uh, our mother's breast, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the taste of the bond, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, the taste when our, our mothers and fathers, you know, can can sense danger, yes. even when we're far away. And yes, this the in intuition. Yeah, we've had yes. so many examples of persons who, who spirit began to pray for them, mm -hmm. they even been aware mm -hmm. because of that connection. Yes. But then... God's word says you're going to leave that and yes. uh, form a new connection yes. that becomes a priority. It doesn't mean that the initial relationship um, has been minimized or that, let's say, the love dried up. No, it doesn't mean that. Because it's really, we have a capacity yes. um, to love within the context of our family. Yes. And of course, a capacity to love another. But, but, but. Uh, people tell us take that the wrong way, right? Yeah, you gotta be very careful that. <laughs> I mean, they say you have the capacity to love more than one person. <laughs> but right. I'm talking here about capacity to love in terms of their family Probably. context yes. and in terms now of loving. Because truthfully, we may be joking, but sometimes that is why some um, mothers in particular may find it difficult to let go of their sons. That's right. I mean, that's what I was going to make. Yeah. You know, mm. um, that's a very, very important point. Yeah. And, and I, I don't think we can be the complete loves. Yes. The, the different loves. Yeah, <laughs> different loves. Right? Uh, but Both are critical. It, it does create some, mm -hmm. some challenges at times yes. um, for, for young married couples. Yeah, because, because it's as if I am, I am somehow this young lady coming into my life, into our life, and took my son away. Especially if, if, if the mother, and I don't want to be mothers, but I, I, I say <laughs> a lot more. Uh, often, is a mommy's the, boy the mother child, yeah, but a separate relationship, yes. you know, especially if the mother was a single parent, yes, and that is know, true, that is sweat and tears, yes, she raised his boy, and know? shaped this uh, yeah, and of a man a now, good outstanding citizen, yes, and, you know, and now he decides, he's a job, you yes. know, um, and, and perhaps even looked after her very well. He finds another lady, you know, and he finds another woman, yeah. But we want to say to the ladies out there, the moms out there, um, you can release him, <laughs> you have empowered him. And what will happen as he moves on to a new relationship, um, he has not abandoned you, but you've empowered him that he can carry on, so to speak, the legacy. And, and I, I, I totally conquer. Well, yeah. let, let's, let's get to talk about the issue of sex, though, mm -hmm. and, um, and that whole uh, anatomical yes. reality, you know, um, that oftentimes becomes our first, the first notion mm -hmm. of, of our own sexuality yes. uh, in terms of, of the penis or, or, or the vagina. Yeah. And mm -hmm. as, as we know, um, you know, the, uh, before, it used to be a big surprise, but it's not to say it's a boy mm -hmm. or it's a girl. Mm -hmm. But now we have stolen that, 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 that thunder mm -hmm. and we can't through... You know, some people still. Means some people still. It all the old school will be. Yes. yes. <laughs> but my first is this: go to the after song and yes, stuff. Yes. Yes. Able to, yes. Uh, to determine uh, whether it's a male or female. Mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, I, I want to say that, that the, the the genitalia is not uh, in our current culture and context is not the end all be all of the oh, sexuality. Sexuality, yes, because yes. Mm -hmm. as well as some persons now who uh, become. Um, Transgenders, mm -hmm. you know, where they don't identify with that particular role, that mm -hmm. gender role, and that has been assigned to, to them um, at birth, you mm -hmm. know, and, uh, and of course, it's also another very, another very troubling issue uh, for uh, that of the of that intersex, you mm -hmm. know, um, those persons who uh, may be born with both um, genitalia, you know, um, um, and we call it, you know, ambiguous genitalia, mm -hmm. you know, where it is a Maybe a, a penis and, and, a, and a vagina together, mm -hmm. and uh, how do we treat those kind of issues become yes. um, a, a, a major uh, challenge for the church as well. So, yes. so, so the issue then of of, of, of sex and and uh, and uh, sexual orientation mm -hmm. uh, becomes a, a point of of phenomenal discussion mm -hmm. uh, with regards to the different kinds of realities yes. that can occur. But oftentimes, it's, it's a taboo area. In church, but I think we need to. I recall years back I, when I was a youth president, and I remember having a 
discussion of sex in the church. And it caused a big roar because you don't, and I'm talking about church a Sunday morning that was, mm -hmm. I was bold enough to let, say, let's talk about sex in the Sunday morning service. And of course, many of the older ones, they felt uneasy and in some cases offended um, because we had the wrong, I would say concept of sex, that it has to be kept. Um, yes, sex is a private mm -hmm. experience, mm -hmm. but in terms of our talking about it and bringing it in the open, mm -hmm. and it's not anything that is dirty. Mm -hmm. God created sex. Mm -hmm. It definitely cannot have thought of, of an idea as beautiful as sex, mm -hmm. but of course, he has sought to make it adulterated, if you wish. And to pollute it. Pollute it. Because anything God has, God has created, the mm -hmm. devil mm -hmm. seeks to um, adulterate. Mm -hmm. And in fact, when you think about sex, um, sex has caused lots of problems <laughs> in the world. Even in scripture. Even in scripture. You remember David? <laughs> David and Samson. Bathsheba, Samson. Samson. <laughs> so it's a human phenomenon that we need to, to address. I just want to share this comment with you and have, have your feedback on it. Um, this writer says that sex is purely recreational, a normal biological need that can be fulfilled in any way that is exciting and however we can get it as long as it is safe. What is your take on that? Well, that word safe uh, is a very interesting word because um, the, the, the safe sex movement of a few years ago uh, promoted that you can have sex, you know, uh, mostly using the requisite um, paraphernalia mm -hmm. uh, to avoid transmission of HIV or uh, the person becoming pregnant or, or any such things. Now, we do know that sex is deeply psychological as well, too. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? And even though there may not be the mm -hmm. evidence of, 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 you know, child being produced, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. um, through through, um, you know, use contraception right. or, or, or um, you're able to, you know, to create the, the, the safety so that HIV is not transmitted. Mm -hmm. We do know, though, that it can impact you psychologically. Exactly. Right? And, uh, and we've seen many persons mm -hmm. who, because of their own promiscuity, mm -hmm. you know... In uh, years intend to come. Yes, I, I, I've done... Have regretted. Have themselves yes. you know, emotions. Yes. So safety in the context <coughs> of the writer... And when we say safety, as we said, they see safe in a physical sense. Right. But because of the psychological yes. and even spiritual nature of sex, yes. um, sometimes we don't look at that in terms of its impact. And that's, that's very, very important, though, um, Reverend Farley, in, in terms of um, persons, uh, how persons see themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, um, they, or they, or they follow themselves. There's yes. some individuals oh, look on life. Who, who struggle, who mm -hmm. struggle because of their their, their sexual past. Mm -hmm. You know, um, yes. you know, uh, the sense of shame, mm -hmm. um, tremendous guilt as well. Mm -hmm. So, so that word safe, we have to kind of look at it yes. um, in, in the context, not just physically, mm -hmm. but also also emotionally. But we also say this as well, though, <coughs> um, about about sex or sex or sexuality. You know that. It is, it, is, it is important for us to recognize that the, 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 the word is, is, is our supreme authority uh, as Christians. The word of God, yes. And, uh, mm -hmm. and, and marriage is supposed to be that which regulates our sexual mm -hmm. activity. Mm -hmm. It's the context. It's in that context, yes. right? And that's important. But, but you know that's not going to be. In this present um, day, in a modern day, that's not going to. That's not going to be absorbed. That that that, that will not fly. Yeah, it will not fly. Will not fly yeah. But that doesn't mean that as the church that we need to back down on that. No. Yes. Right. And we have to be very strong mm -hmm. about it. We have to be, as as I said, you know, uh, it's a journey of grace, mm -hmm. and uh, for those yes. persons who may have had uh, some lived sexual experiences, mm -hmm. you know, we have to be able to to work with them, and, and of course we we. We can talk about perverted sex as well, which is abuse. Yes. You know, sexual abuse. You yes. Know, um, mm -hmm. uh, which can be very, very, very damaging to yes. someone. Yes. Of course, rape as well. Rape as well. Mm -hmm. These are realities. It's, it's just a power. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. um, those are the kind of, of, of realities we have to, as a church, uh, not just grapple with, mm -hmm. but to 
but play the element of grace to individuals yeah. mm -hmm. um, so they can be able to, mm -hmm. to find a soothing yeah. um, with, with regards to and also how, how, how we can more appreciate mm -hmm. um, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And of course, even anyone who's listening, um, persons who in some way might figure that they have acted dysfunctionally as a rich success and have been scarred or wounded, we want to project here, although, I mean, the same Bible that dictates how we should do it also dictates that forgiveness mm -hmm. for wounds caused. Because sometimes people think they have to bear these wounds for the balance of their lives yes, and right. these cards. Yes, right. So we want to also promote the Bible gives guidelines um, in terms of sexual behavior. But if you fall, because we are in a fallen world, mm -hmm. and I think that's the reason why sex has been perverted, because we're in a fallen world, and sin has marred mm -hmm. and, and scarred the whole process of sex. It, it wants to come back, though, maybe mm -hmm. a bit later. I know in our second program, mm -hmm. we probably look at the issue of homosexuality. And well, of course, we get there, yes. That was of homosexual orientation. In the next, the next program, right. we'll talk but, about that. Yeah, but we'll come back, though, too. Mm -hmm. But I just wanted to make a point to those who are listening, yeah. that if they've fallen short, and all of us, the Bible says, have fallen short anyway, yes. that they don't have to th think that they're doomed, that grace, as you said, yeah. is available, yeah. that God is a forgiving God, and God can help us to heal those. Because some, sometimes people have these secret wounds that nobody knows about, right. and, 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 also, and it hinders their progress, yeah. and, and not, only, not, only, not only in church, but sometimes it impacts their, their, their life period. Of course. I mean, their functioning. Like I said, I mean, the issue of self-esteem, you know. Yes, yes. Um, I mean, it has a question. Shame some, and guilt. Yeah, it has a question. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when we go in the program, mm -hmm. about, about the issue of, of self-esteem and, and, and drugs. And, mm -hmm. and in the last program that, yes. that, that came up with our, with our special guest, mm -hmm. you know, the person then said there was no connection, which I disagree with. But, mm -hmm. but, but even persons get involved in deviant behavior, yes. you know, mm -hmm. um, it can originate because of Issues of, 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 yes. of, of sexuality, even yes. the, the prostitution. Yes. Uh, we know that about 25% of all prostitutes uh, have been persons who were sexually abused. Abuse. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. um, and uh, so, 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 so it, it is a far, it's a far reaching mm -hmm. um, you know, reality in terms yes. of, uh, of, of sex and, and, and because of the level of, of intimacy that sex creates, yes. you know, um, it, it, it yes. really has power to damage yes. as well, you know, yeah. in, that, in, that, in that regard, yes. psychologically. Mm -hmm. uh, so so we, we've got to, to understand that. Yes, that, yes. yes. And, and, and what <coughs> we'll see as well is that sometimes it's not just simply the person who may have wronged you sexually. There are times where the person feel responsible as well. Mm -hmm. We've mentioned guilt before. And forgiving oneself becomes also an important reality. Reality, you know, yeah. and 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 I know obviously the persons that, you know, I, I usually use this do this line in counseling. Mm -hmm. I would say to the persons, you know, if a perfect God can forgive an imperfect individual, mm -hmm. why can an imperfect person forgive an imperfect person? True. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If the perfect God, and and this is borne out in in John seven and John eight, when Christ said to him. You know, um, uh, he's without sin, cast the first stone. That's right. Yeah. And uh, the truth of the matter is that if there was anyone who could have legitimately cast a stone, mm -hmm. it would have been Christ. Yes, but he didn't. He, but he didn't, you know. He offered and, grace. And the words that everyone left one by one. Yeah, he offered grace. And he said to her, you know, neither I condemn thee. Mm -hmm. You go and sin no more. Yeah. So the point I'm making, though, is that if, if, if God can forgive us mm -hmm. um, of, our, of, our, of our sin, of our our behaviors, mm -hmm. you know, then certainly we I can forgive ourselves. We can forgive ourselves yes. and, and and approximate you know, our forgiveness mm -hmm. uh, to that which 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 God does for us. Great. Forgiveness frees us to move on. Yes. But viewers, I know this topic is very absorbing, but we'll be back with you in a moment to wrap up this first session. The Church of the Nazarene Family Forum. Shaping our society for the future by enhancing our homes and securing our destiny. Come join us every Sunday at 5 p.m. on CBC TV 8 as we turn the spotlight on an aspect of family life of critical importance to us. Tune in and be blessed. All right, we're back with you. And of course, as I said, the time has slipped by so quickly. Just want to give you a few guidelines for self control. Um, found in a book, Family Shop. Um, 
from a, an extract, ex escape the sexual trap. And um, I just want to list them and move on and admit that you are vulnerable. Think about significant people in your life. How does your thought life and any secret sexual behavior influence your relationships with your spouse, your children, other members of your family, and God? Make a decision to change. We're talking here guidelines for self-control. Find a support base. Because this may mean an individual or a group with whom you can have honest and honest, for you can be honest, I should say, who holds you accountable. Stay away from temptation. That's a simple one. Stay clear of people, places, and entertainment, reading material, even television programs that tempt you. Plan ahead so you can not be caught in situations uh, where you are vulnerable and inclined to compromise. Expect resistance. Keep communication open with God. If you do yield to temptation, ask for, for God's forgiveness. Trust God to help you to change. And of course, find a counselor. When self-control problems persist, a good counselor can indeed help to bring about change. Calvin, just a few tips. Yeah, I think they're very, they're very apt in terms of, you know, a spirit of control or, or sexuality. And I, I normally say that the urge for, for sex is as sure as life itself, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because it is that which produces life. In, yes. in, of, co of course, with God, <laughs> of course, you know, yes. uh, procreation, as some God working together mm -hmm. uh, to continue. Uh, and, and, and so we have to keep it in check, though, yes. because if we don't, then... It can be like a horse that gets a little bit stable, yes. and then, you know... It and, and we are mastered by it. We're mastered by it, yes. that's right. Yes. yes. Well, a closing prayer as we conclude. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Almighty God, we give you thanks today for the gift of sex and sexuality. We pray, Father, for your direction as we, uh, Lord, uh, subscribe to your word and to that which you have given to us, the direction for the practice of sex. And, and we pray, Father, even now for your wisdom, for your direction. Lord, for those who may be struggling with guilt and anxiety and anger because of, of sexual relationships, we pray, God, for your forgiveness and for your healing and for your deliverance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And I would end with this Bible verse that says, Flee, 1 Corinthians 6, 18. Flee sexual immorality. All other sins a man commits are outside his body. But he who sins sexually sins against his own body. Think on these things. God bless you. <laughs>